The warm, beautiful weather we are having at the moment is the perfect opportunity to make delicious elderflower cordial to further brighten your summer days. If you haven't tried this before, you're really going to love it. Making elderflower cordial is such a quick, cheap recipe that's versatile, has health benefits, and is great for frugal foragers that want to make the most of what's around them at the moment. So today, it's time to grab your basket and get flower hunting. We are so lucky to have an elderflower bush just outside a property, but you can find elderflower really easily in the country. You can recognize it by its bushy white, small flowers or florets, slender green stalks and sweet scent. Make sure when you're picking your flowers that they have reached full bloom, which should be around late May to mid June, depending on your climate. Try to pick flowers away from any traffic fumes and when they're at their best. If they smell like cat pee, they're no good. And of course the bees and natures need them too, so try not to completely strip a bush and leave some for nature's purposes. So for this particular recipe, which I will leave in the description box below, I am gathering 15 large flower heads, which is going to be good for about one litre of cordial. If you want more, you can simply just double up the amounts. The only other ingredients you're going to need are two lemons, one kilogram of granulated sugar, and about one litre of boiling water. You can use tap water for this. Um, if you're making anything else like champagne, I would recommend to not use tap water because the chlorine might kill off the natural yeasts in the elderflower, but for cordial, this is fine. So I'm just going to be pouring the boiling water in and also adding in the granulated sugar. I'm going to be waiting for this to dissolve in the water until we essentially just have a sugar syrup. This will only take a few minutes, so just keep stirring until you have a clear sugary liquid. Next, you're gonna take your two lemons and zest them before squeezing all the juice out. This acts as a natural citric acid. This is an alternative. You can just use citric acid instead of lemons, but this will help preserve your cordial um, for a longer period of time if you use the citric acid but lemons is just fine too. So place that into your liquid and give it a little stir. The next thing you're gonna do is just juice all of those lemons. Um, don't worry about having the seeds go in, we will be straining that later, so save yourself a bit of time and just pop them all in. You could just slice them all as well. So next onto the elderflowers. I am going to be removing the flowers from the stalks. You could do this with a fork, um, I'm just going to snip them off. The stalks are indeed poisonous so you don't really want to put them in here, especially when it's a cold brew and not something that's cooked. So I'm just going to be snipping off all of the little leaf florets and placing them into the water. Before you do this, you want to check for bugs and insects and um, you don't want to wash these. Make sure not to wash them because you will remove some of the natural yeasts that are in the flowers. If you do this, this may inhibit some of the natural properties of the flowers. Once you have submerged all your flowers into the water, you're going to cover this over to protect from any flies and air and leave to sit for one to two days, stirring day and night. Um, this is the little technique we use to just cover it over, just a sheet and a cloth. And after about two days uh, with intermittent stirring, um, this is what your liquid will look like. The flowers will have darkened and the liquid will have turned a deeper goldeny colour. Whilst infusing this liquid over the past two days, the smell really does fill the kitchen and is really delicious. The next stage for this is to just strain all the flowers and we will have our liquid and cordial. Um, I would recommend to use a glass bottle and sterilize it, but for now I only have a plastic one, so I just poured a lot of boiling water in there. You could mix in a tiny bit of vinegar uh, to sterilize the plastic bottles. So to sieve all this out, I just took out the main bulk of flowers using a fabric that has a fine mesh. You could use muslin cloth for this as well. Okay. 
From there, I just poured the rest of the liquid into my jug that had the mesh inside, and that way I could just be able to squeeze all that extra liquid out and pour it into my bottle. So guys, this is what the liquid looks like once sieved, and it's just time to place into your bottle of choice, and you can store this in the fridge for up to two weeks, I believe. Um, if you want to make it last a lot longer, you could freeze into ice cubes and keep them in your freezer, so you have an ice cube and the cordial all in one, so much, much easier to store this in that way if you want to keep it for longer. So all you have to do is just dress up your lovely little bottle of cordial and stick a little sticker on it with a date so you know when it was made, and there you have it, perfect little summer drink. Um, I really enjoyed making this one and it was a success, and I urge you to give it a try if you haven't already. As well as being a delicious addition to cocktails in sparkling water, this is also used in many, many uh, recipes for cakes and desserts, and can also alleviate allergy symptoms and is known for boosting the immune system, so what's not to love? I also have some bonus content because as I was making this cordial, I was also experimenting with elderflower champagne, which, spoiler alert, was a little bit of a fail, but I filmed all the footage anyway, so I thought I would show you that process too and show you where it went wrong. So the process for this was essentially pretty much the same, just using larger quantities and doing it in a slightly different order. So I had done boiling water, added the sugar in to make sugar syrup, mixed until diluted, and then I think I added in the lemons and lemon zests. This was a bit more lemon than I had used in the other recipe. Um, I think for this you have to make sure everything is thoroughly sterilised. I might not even be using the right pan for this, because certain metals can interrupt and make the wine bad, but before you put in your elderflowers, I had to cool the water down, because if you just put the elderflower into straight boiling water, it would kill off the natural yeast. Now, for this recipe, um, I was kind of going the au naturel route and hoping that the flowers and their natural yeasts that contain inside them would be enough to um, make a fizzy fermented wine. Which, in theory, makes total sense, but it's possible that my flowers didn't have yeast, or I did something very wrong along the way. So I just submerged all the flowers like I did in the last recipe, and from then on, after I had mixed it, I was told to let it sit for three days, and if it hadn't created a fizz after three days, to then introduce champagne yeast into the mix. And after the three days, it wasn't creating a fizz. And I didn't have champagne yeast, so I thought I would just leave it for a couple of days, maybe it was going to do its thing in a little bit longer time. And it didn't, it didn't do anything. Um, I wasn't told to agitate it, I wasn't told to mix it in the recipe, um, and I left it for another three days to see if it did anything. I also wrapped it up because I thought maybe the air was getting to it, so um, yeah, I wrapped it up a little bit more and protected it a bit more from the air but it just created a big stagnant, mouldy, slimy mess, which was very disappointing. And um, yeah, I'm really not sure what happened. It could be not agitating it, it could have been when I did mix it the after the three days that I had introduced a bacteria with, with maybe not sterilising my equipment enough at the beginning or during, and it created a mould spore. I'm not entirely sure what happened here, but I think this is what they call ropiness in wine making, where the liquid has a bacteria in it and it has created a ropey egg white texture. So as you can see here, when you lifted it up, it was just complete slime and it wasn't good. I did taste it just to see what it was like and it didn't taste bad although it did taste slightly vinegary, so maybe if I'd left this a couple more um, days it, it would turn into vinegar, I'm not quite sure. So I would like to see if any of you know what I did wrong, or was I meant to agitate it, was I meant to mix it, 
um, maybe I just didn't sterilize or there was just not enough lateral yeasts to do it this way and I have to introduce champagne ye yeasts. I'm not sure but I bottled it up anyway just to see an experiment to see if it would indeed ferment in some way. As of yet I don't believe it has. Um, but yeah you live and you learn and it was a fail but it was a lesson learned for next time and I'll definitely be trying it again. Next summer hopefully we can have a success story and I can share it with you on this channel. So I hope you enjoyed this video and um, enjoy your elderflower cordial if you make it. If you do be sure to let me know in the comments how it went and make sure that you have a really lovely summer and enjoy the heat while we have it. So thank you so much for watching. Cheers! Mm -hmm.